In today's video, I'm going to be comparing Webflow to Framer, and I'm gonna show you which is the best website builder for you to use. I'm gonna go through everything you need to know from the pricing to the features, so you can make the best educated decision on which one you should use. Now, make sure you watch the video the whole way through, pay close attention to ensure that you understand the pros and cons of each and you can make a great decision. So let's get right into it. First things first, let's talk about the pricing of each of them. Now, if we go on to Framer here, we can go over to pricing and the pricing starts at zero pound. This is free for hobby sites. You get a Framer domain and a Framer banner. Now, what this means is that you can't have your own custom domain on it, which is a shame. But for just four pound per month, now this is billed annually, you can get a simple site and you can have a custom domain connected to it. Now, for £12 per month, you can have a personal site with 150 pages, with password protection, one CMS collection, 10,000 visitors a month, and 10 page search. So this one here is probably going to be the best one if you're just getting started and want to have a custom domain added to it. They also have the pro plan and the custom plan, but these are for people that are not just getting started, you know, if you want to upgrade. So I'd recommend starting with one of these two. Now, if we go and look at Webflow, the pricing of Webflow, I believe, is a little bit more expensive. So if we look here, they have a free plan as well, which gives you similar features. Now, if we actually go over to their basic plan, it's $14 per month, but this is where you can actually have a custom domain included. It's not included in the price, but this means that you can buy a custom domain and connect it. Now for this one here, it's $23 a month and you get a CMS, which allows you to manage your content. So for most people, these two plans will be good. So starting off from here, you can already see that Framer is going to be a bit cheaper if you want to get started at four pound and 12 pound compared to Webflow, which is $14 and $23. So let's actually go and look at the uses of both of them. So I'm gonna go ahead now and just create a brand new site on Webflow. Uh, I can start off if I want to do with some of these blank sort of templates here, or they actually have a lot of paid templates and some other free templates. One of the benefits of Webflow is that for relatively cheap, you can find yourself a really good template, which is going to make your website look 10 times better. If you go here, I can show you all of the different templates and themes that they offer. A lot of them are paid, but they do actually offer some free ones which are really good. So take a look at these, and I'd recommend if you're on a time crunch, you haven't got too much time to build a website, getting one of these is so worth it. It makes everything easy to use, and you can just sort of drag, drop, and change the text to your liking, especially if it's something simple. I'm gonna go down here, and I'm actually going to use one of their free pages. I'm going to go here to free templates, I'm going to click view all, and I'm just going to find one that I like. So let's say this fitness one here, I'm going to use this one for free. And boom, the site is now loading up. Okay, so first things first is you can see that this is pretty user friendly. You can, you know, drag the cursor down the page to look at the different features. And changing the text is very simple in Webflow. So if I wanted to change this text here, I could just double click on it. And I can simply type in what I want to in here. So I could type in easy L just like this. Now, if I tap on this here, you'll see on the right, there's a ton of stylized options here. So I can really change the styles of the text very easily. I can change the sizing. I can change the display types. I can change the spacing. So you can see here, this text is slightly covered by this. This is due to the spacing here. So if I put zero, you can see the spacing is a bit bigger now. There's a ton of different sizing features that I can change in here and they're relatively easy. Now, obviously you can't just go and do it. You will have to probably watch a few tutorials to get the hang of it. You can sort of just blag your way through it, but you will end up making some weird things that will mess up. So it's always good to watch a few tutorials about it. But if I scroll down here, I can easily change the background of this. If I want to change the opacity of the background. I can change the color of the text. So I can have it to this nice light blue. I can easily change this border radius if I had a background. I can change the borders here. So you can see the block now has a border around it. And we've got some cool blending options here, as well as things like shadows, all that kind of stuff. 
So that's the style section of Webflow. It's very easy to use. I can do this for images. I can do this for pretty much everything on here, all the way up to sections and the padding for that. You can also add things like backgrounds. It's very simple to use. The next thing we can look at is the settings. So the settings tab basically deals with the the settings tab basically deals with what each different feature does. So for example, this easy L text here, we could add a slide and have it into a slideshow. You can see I've just undone that. We could, you know, hide it. We can create a component out of it. We can change the heading type so you can set a heading type and you can change that for the whole page and you can and you can change interactions as well so interactions are kind of like animations I guess you could say in a way so I can add an element trigger so if I hover my mouse over it I can select an action so I can start an animation or I can get it to do something so we can say jiggle and if I press preview it's going to show me the animation there so jiggle I can add a delay so I can tap it and then it's going to jiggle a second later and then I can have a hover out um, animation too. So I can say shrink big. So let's preview that. We can shrink out. So that would be an animation setup there that I could use. So I think if I was to preview this now, if I hovered over this, I'm not sure whether it's not working. I've probably done something wrong here, but you know, if I, if I, if I gave it a bit of a look, I can make that work pretty easily. So those are the three different aspects in terms of design and you know, how it looks really and how it interacts with the person. You can also go up here and you can edit on uh, tablet view, mobile landscape and mobile portrait view. You can edit all of those. And you can also add some custom uh, sizes as well just so you can see how the site looks on different platforms. If we actually want to edit a bit more of the stuff like the back end we can go to the left here and there's a few features here. So we have the pages section. This allows you to see the different pages that you actually have. So I can click here and this is obviously a different page on my site. I can go down here to my CMS collection pages. So you can create some different templates here um, and have that for your CMS. If you have a website that hosts houses, for example, you can have a template for houses which contains things like price. So if I click and look at the settings here, I can actually edit all of the different variables for this CMS item. This stuff is not super easy to use, but I will say that if you just watch some tutorials on it, it's not the end of the world. It's pretty easy. You can you can get the hang of it quite easily. We also have the e-commerce pages, so we can create templates for e-commerce products, and this will be a dynamic page. So if you have multiple products, this page will stay the same, but the details will change per product. That's a pretty cool feature. And then down here we have our utility pages such as password. We also have things like checkout, order confirmation, all that kind of stuff, which you can link up pretty easily. Here we have our navigator and our navigator essentially is showing you all the different things that you have on the site. So if I keep doing these drop down boxes here, it's going to open up more and more and I can actually see the different elements I have on the page. I can use this if I wanted to sort of rearrange them, for example. Now this page hasn't got much and you can see I've done something there. So it's made it look weird. So I can just do Control Z and undo it. So it is, it is easy to use, especially if you're just doing something pretty basic. Next thing we can go down to this component section. So a lot of the themes will have default components um, that you can use over and over again. So you have like navbar, featured item, footer, and it tells you how many times you're using it. And you can basically drag these blocks in over and over again. So you don't have to create them every single time. You can just create it once save it and then you can just use that on every single page which is pretty useful. Over here we have variables so variables are similar to components but these are like preset variables for your site so you don't have to keep setting the same color every time. So for example if you have a color palette you can set them in the variables here and then you can just select the colors here for the different items rather than having to put the hex code in every single time. We have the style selector here so you can, you know, add styles to different elements. So you can set styles like padding, all that different kind of stuff that you can just drag onto elements. So it's basically going to keep the same style across the board if you'd like. 
Over here we have assets. So assets is obviously where you put all of your um, different things like images and uh, videos in. And you can just upload them here and you can just drag and drop them in and use them wherever you'd like to. Now the next bit that you're probably interested in potentially is the CMS section. So the CMS here is going to click on here and I can actually create a new CMS item here. And it's going to allow me to put the variables in here. So you can actually set up a template which will give you these variables. So for example, I can create a template which will ask me for the plan name and, and mean that I have to add all these variables in each time that I want to add a new plan or whatever. So I can type in all the information here, I can click create, and then I can you know, have something like this which will change the pages dynamically if I've set a page for it. The next part here is the logic flows, so you can, you know, go really in depth with the sort of logic. You could have like quid quizzes and stuff. So if if so, if, for example, if you're having a workout plan, you could have some kind of quiz such as what's your body type, how old are you, how often do you exercise, how free are you, all that kind of stuff. And you can have this logic plan which could recommend someone a specific product on your site, for example, which is quite cool. Over here we have users, so we can create user accounts of people. And then we have our e-commerce section here so we can actually you know, look at the products that we've created. So they've got these different products. Again, we can create templates for this. So each time you have to fill in these different variables. And it's very simple to actually go ahead and add new products. Lastly, over here we have apps. And this is a good feature about Webflow. They allow you to have the apps here. And these integrate really easily. And you know they make your job a lot easier. So instead of having to created a, C a CRM from scratch, you can, you know, add HubSpot or something like that. Um, you know, if you wanted memberships, you can just add it in like that and it will save you a lot of time. So if you do have specific needs of your site, it would be good to go in and have a look at the apps to see if any of these apps will save you a lot of time because very often it will save you, there'll be something made for you and it will save you a lot of time having to custom code it and that. So that's basically everything you need to know about Webflow. Now I'm going to go into Framer now and show you a bit about how Framer works, the pros and cons of it, all the features of it, that kind of stuff. So Framer here, I'm going to click start a free trial today. Okay, so we're inside Framer now and to make it fair, I'm going to show you the templates that we can use for Framer. So Framer, similarly to Webflow, it actually has these different templates and some of them are very, very similar, like really, really similar. And the pricing is pretty similar as well. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at this theme here. I'm going to use it for free and it should load up into, here we go. So as you can see already, Framer is a lot more of a visual editor. Just like something like Figma, it's a lot more visual and focuses way more on how it looks rather than its functionality, I would say. First of all, we can do similarly to Webflow. We can go over here and click on an item like this and we can change the text very easily. So, oh. And something I like is that, you know, you can quickly drag across to see how it looks on the different views, which is pretty cool. I can click on this box here and I can change all of the settings on the text, pretty similar to Webflow. You know, I can add effects, I can add overlays, I can change the opacity. It's pretty similar. There is probably less features than Webflow, but slightly more designed to be looking good rather than be functional, I would say. I can go over to things like buttons here and I can, you know, change what the button does, where it scrolls to. I can add bits of code for what the buttons do. All features that Webflow can do. If I want to click on, you know, this section here, I can change the color of it. I can change the border. I can do all the, all the same stuff as Webflow. In terms of functionality, I would say there's probably a little bit less you can actually do with Framer, but it is slightly easier in a way to look good. It's a lot simpler. Now, if we go over to the left here, we have the CMS section, but the CMS section is a lot more bare than Webflow. You can see here it's it is not super user friendly and it's not super detailed at the same time. So I can add a new item here, but you can see all we have here is the title, you know, slug, date, image, content. Whereas with Webflow, we had a million different options that we ca could do. Now we can add, add, now we can edit the fields here, um, but there's not a lot of customization like you can do. We can add new films here, 
But again, there's still less features than there is in Webflow, I would say. We can go here on layers. If I go to the homepage, for example, I can go to layers and this is going to show us all the different layers that are on this page. We can also go to assets and you'll be able to see all the different assets that we have built in. So if we go back to the top, we can go to insert here and some of the cool features they have on here is you can actually paste from Figma. So if you've ever used Figma, it's like a design tool. You can actually paste the elements directly in from Figma and then you can link them up to a website here, you know, give the buttons usage, um, which is pretty cool, pretty cool feature. They also have some basic templates here, which are pretty cool and easy to use as well as navigations, you know, menus, different elements, all that stuff. So there's a lot more, you know, stuff to look good here, really. We can change the layout pretty easy. We can change the text. And then the last thing we want to look at is the actions here. So we can actually create components or type slash. And it's going to give us a load of different actions that we can do in here. Now, you know, we can press start here. We can see what the website looks like. We can drag it down. And we can also publish it easily here. So now that we've looked at both of them, it's time to give my review, tell you which one's best. So if you're someone that needs a bit of a complex, if you're someone that needs a complex site that has a lot of features in it, you know, you want to have a booking website or something that has a little bit of complexity to it, then I recommend going for Webflow because you have a lot more functionality there, a lot more freedom with what you do. But if you want something which is a lot more simple and a lot more visual based and you're not trying to put too much logic and too much stuff like that into it I would go for Framer because it is a lot easier to work with it is a lot easier to work with visually and if you're a designer that uses something like Figma then you can import your design straight into here like this but that's basically everything you need to know if you have anything you want to say you have any comments you have any points that I've missed then please let me know down below and I will try to include them in another video and if you enjoyed the video please like and subscribe and comment down below that this video was helpful in making you decide so thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video